Hello and welcome back to another edition of the Osceola's Reeling, Reeling Them In recruiting podcast and video cast. And I am joined today by Rivals National Recruiting Analyst John Garcia, who's got a uh, busy weekend ahead of him as Rivals will hold a combine on Saturday in Miami and then hold the, or their elite camp or our elite camp on Sunday in Miami. And uh, a lot of good prospects going to be down there, John. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of guys that uh, – are known. Uh, you've mentioned Javion Hilson, Zaire Addison, and Max Buchanan, uh, some Florida State targets that are going to be down there, and probably a ton of underclassmen that we're going to learn about over the next 48 hours. Yeah, 100. percent This is a and it's a South Florida event. You know, it's 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 called Rivals Camp Miami, but it's very much a Florida state of Florida feel. You know, we, we've got a lot of prospects. Good on them making trips down all the way from the panhandle uh, on down uh, to, to South Florida to get some work in. So I think it'll be unique in that, you know, we, we'll get a lot of South Florida on South Florida, but then we'll get a sprinkle of some IMG guys, some Orlando guys, Tampa guys, and, and even all the way up to Caden Hall in, in, in the panhandle coming down uh, to compete Jacksonville guys as well. So I think that will be a unique twist uh, to this camp versus other camps that are a little more hyper local or regional. So Really excited about the group that's coming. And you mentioned some of the headliners. I mean, uh, Winston Watkins is a five-star who's going to compete. Uh, Javion Hilson's a top 50 guy who I think, if there's a bump candidate available, I mean, I think he's got an opportunity to up his stock even more. And a dominant showing against what should be a really good offensive line group would propel him uh, pretty far uh, up the ranks. So really excited to see every position group that's going to be out there quarterback on down. And we typically skip over the QBs in, in yeah. this great state, but in this 26 class, we're going to talk about a lot of guys for a long time. And, and most of the, the big guns, the four stars, will be competing as well. So really excited about that. It'll be interesting to uh, see Zaire Addison go up against Javion Hilson. That will be interesting to a lot of Florida State fans. Uh, we're going to have not only John down there for rivals re uh, representing us nationally, uh, but we'll also have Charles Fishbein uh, attending this camp for the Osceola. And uh, Nick Carlisle will be down there as well. And so we hope to have video of all these guys. Uh, listen, uh, where going back to Javion, let's just start with him. Obviously, he was a guy that was committed to uh, Alabama. Then Nick Saban retired. He decommitted and committed to Florida State. You know, there's a lot of smoke about Alabama coming in after him very hard. Uh, obviously, whatever their concerns were with Kalen DeBoer by the players on Alabama's roster and recruits has kind of been offset because obviously very, uh, very good feedback. You got Caden Proctor transferring back from Iowa. That's a weird situation. We don't see a whole lot of that. But you know, uh, I think Javion's been to Florida over the last couple of weeks. Just what are you, what's your take in trying to read the tea leaves on Javion, who's definitely a priority for Florida State? Yeah, I think the two programs that he's made verbal commitments to are probably going to be the two that have to battle it out for him through official visit season. Um, obviously, Hilson is a breakout recruit state champion player who uh, really be, burst onto the national scene kind of during the season itself last fall and everybody jumped in on him and he made that really early commitment to Alabama and, and obviously felt comfortable there. As you mentioned, Nick Saban retires and everybody circles back on a premier pass rusher in a class that is not loaded at the edge position, you know, compared to most classes. Uh, so I think that only increases the, the value and, and the amount of pressure programs are trying to put uh, on JV on. So you understand why he is taking other visits. He's setting multiple officials uh, with no disrespect to the other programs. I do feel like this is a Florida state Alabama type of deal. And what makes it interesting from that angle is, you know, there was a lot of transition in Tuscaloosa, but the defensive line coach stayed put, Freddie Roach. So I think yeah. that continuity helped Alabama stay in the game for Hilson even after the decommitment. Uh, and obviously he was able to get back over to Tuscaloosa. And a lot of the feedback coming from there is that, you know, Bama's kind of got this standard that everybody understands and, and is easy to see and perceive. But then DeBoer's staff is sort of modernizing and, and going younger with some of the execution points 
thereafter. So there's music at practice. It's a little bit yeah. more rowdy. Um, there's more social media presence, more access to the assistant coaches. So they're trying to blend, you know, that standard with uh, a younger, more modern approach that was obviously very anti Nick Saban. So I think that's resonating with recruits as well. So like you mentioned, you haven't seen a huge drop off in Alabama recruiting, but look, Hilson's an in-state kid, Florida state, I think perceptionally and literally is, is the top program in the state right now. And that carries heavy weight regardless of, of what city, you know, comes before the, the FLA in, in the title there. So I do think that's going to hold true for Florida state uh, throughout this entire cycle. Well, you mentioned Zaire Addison and Max Buchanan, and those are two guys that have recently been on Florida State's campus, John. And uh, something tells me, uh, besides talking with Max, and we've talked with Zaire uh, to a lesser degree, uh, but uh, I think they're, I think that Florida State's in a really good position with both those guys. Uh, there's some telltale signs that you learn to pick up on when these kids are on their unofficial visits and, you know, uh, one of the things that stood out to me is that they're both of both those guys we did not see come out the front door of the Moore Center the last time they were here. And, uh, you know, we, you know, it's kind of like we got Chris Otto coming out the day he committed, but he didn't want to announce it. And he, we kind of got him, he got caught in a catch 22. Uh, just, but what are your thoughts on where Florida State stands with Zaire and Max Buchanan right now? Yeah, um, FSU in early on each of these guys. And I think that that's really become the key. Uh, towards staying at, at really the top of the race for each of them. Um, Addison, a bit of a projection, right? Well, when FSU got involved, he was very early in his transition from basketball and playing D-line to coming over to the offensive line where he is a clear offensive tackle projection at this point. FSU was one of those early believers that jumped in uh, with the scholarship offer before many other national powers did, and that's something that is resonating with Zaire, although he is becoming one of the more well-traveled recruits uh, yes. in this class. But I think FSU has got a lot of staying power uh, in this recruitment and maybe the national interest pushes his decision further into the off season. But I think regardless of when, you know, he wants to sit down and make that call, FSU will have a hat on the table. And, and I think among the in-state schools, I think FSU has got to feel the best of that group going into that, which is really advantageous position right now uh, a couple other schools you know clemson ohio state penn state are all going to be factors here and he's, he's making the west coast swing that that really moved him as well so this one could be a, a huge battle as time rolls on uh and every time everyone sees him his stock is rising simultaneously yeah. uh, so I, I do think addison will be a, a fascinating battle but fsu will stay in the thick of it i think with buchanan it's a little bit more regional um this is was billed early on as a big three battle, well, big four battle, because UCF is, is certainly the local school and they've done a really good job. But Miami, Florida, Florida State, otherwise, are uh, really rolling in this recruitment. Uh, and then the big news over the last week to 10 days was it looks like Florida is starting to take a back seat to the rest of, of the schools in state, uh, having canceled that trip and, yep. and doubling down on Florida State. So there's no doubt the Seminoles have momentum with Buchanan, very curious to see when he wants to come off the board. I think Addison is going to take all the OVs, get maybe a decision closer to the beginning of the season. I think Buchanan could be on the other side of that. One or two OVs, maybe shut it down after that. So I think FSU is positioning itself at the right time to contend and potentially lead for, for Max Buchanan. If I was a betting man, I'd say they grab at least one of these two guys, but they have a legitimate chance for both. Yeah, I almost future casted him after his last unofficial visit, uh, just because I felt so. Uh, it seemed like it went really, really well, and the kid has been high on uh, Florida State since we talk, started talking to him uh, in the middle of the last fall when we had him on a, a segment of Really Them In. Uh, two other offensive linemen that uh, really, uh, well, one of them you're seeing it in per live time. Uh, Peyton Joseph has been basically camped out in Tallahassee this week. He's been committed to Florida, uh, has been very uh, visible trying to get other guys to commit to Florida. But then he's at practice on Tuesday. He's at practice on Thursday and told us yesterday after practice uh, that he plans to be back here on Saturday watching scrimmage. Uh, one thing that we did learn uh, yesterday in talking to Peyton, his cousin is TJ Ferguson, the offensive guard that transferred to Florida. Uh, listen, um, you know, I don't know uh, 
you know, Fish and I always talk about it's not about what kids say, it's about what they do. And this yeah. kid's been camped out in Tallahassee. This certainly looks like a flip in the making uh, with Peyton Joseph. How do you read that? Is it, you know, he's he's tried to say that it was he was just here to see his uh, cousin, but he's been here a week. What do you make of that, John? <laughs> Yeah, I think it's that part, right? It, it, it's not a surprise to see a South Georgia native taking trips to Tallahassee and Gainesville and, and, and getting back up to Georgia and some of those schools. That, that makes a lot of sense. But when you start making return trips, overnight trips uh, to one school in particular, and, and this is a recent Florida Gator commitment as well, yes. you know, I think all of those signs are, are relatively uh, telling. Florida's had some transition on its coaching staff. Since he committed, added an offensive line coach. Florida State has had a consistent group uh, on their end, of course, led by Alex Atkins, who's really becoming a, a superstar or offensive line recruiter at, at minimum. Uh, so I think all of that resonates. It keeps kids interested. We've seen Florida State um, really be in the mix for a lot of elite offensive linemen over the last several cycles to where even if you don't land them, Florida State is 1-2 in the race. So I think that that stuff matters in the portal era, especially, um, you know, kids are going to keep their options open and schools are going to do the same. So you understand the sort of broad flip attempt of, of a Peyton Joseph. And look, you, you know, Pat, I mean, South Georgia is, is, is one of the original FSU pipelines. And we've seen yeah. Florida State, you know, consistently successful in that region. And, and he's right in, in the thick of it there at, uh, at Houston County, uh, along with Antoine Hill. So. Yeah, I, I think there's going to be a lot more traction with Peyton Joseph. And when we get to official visit season and that Florida State trip is on the docket, I, I think we'll see where the chips are at that point. But there's no doubt this many visits in a short amount of time is 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 eye-catching. And if you're a Florida Gator fan watching, you're certainly watching this one a little bit more closely than you were a week ago. Yeah, and he is going to drop his official visit list shortly is another thing he told us on uh, – they, They'll get after- – after practice yesterday. So he's going to go to Florida State and Florida, and I'm sure there's going to be a couple other schools involved in there as well. Now, I will say this. He's got a he's got a wonderful personality. I told somebody the other day, he, he kind of seems to be enjoying the recruiting process similar to how Charles Lester did uh, last year. You know, they really understand this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and they're kind of like, hey – you know, I'm only going to be 17 once and nobody's going to recruit me like this again. <laughs> I might as well have fun and go see some places that I may not see ever again in my life or very few times again in my life. So uh, I, in in one regard, I can't blame him. And, uh, of course, uh, working for a Florida State site, we're you know probably happy to see him push the Gators on. For uh, for uh, my man Peyton, I told him he's wearing a paid T-shirt yesterday at practice, and I told him I have to start calling him P Money. Uh, but anyway, it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Now, on the flip side of things, uh, you know, as you and I were discussing about two weeks ago, I'd heard some things on Solomon Thomas, who's going to is scheduled to be in Gainesville this weekend for unofficial visit. Uh, there was some smoke there that maybe uh, the Gators were making up some ground on Florida state. Uh, I've got a source that's kind of uh, got his ear close to the ground as it uh, pertains to Solomon's uh, recruitment. And he seems to think that there's some legs with this uh, visit and, you know, possibly could lead to either a, uh, Florida continuing to gain ground on Florida State or a decommitment altogether. What are you hearing on Solomon? Yeah, look, either way, this is, you know, a five-star, number one interior guy in the class. So this battle's going to go through December at, at a minimum. And it's not just Florida, Florida State. I think no. Miami is, is going to stay in the mix. They're scheduled to get him on campus, I believe, next weekend. So, yeah, this one's got, you know, big three written all over it. Um, And we remember, right, Solomon committed to FSU sort of emotionally. He admitted, you know, the the playoff snub pissed him off. And he's like, wait, why why am I so pissed off? Like, maybe it's a sign that I I need to go to this school. And then he commits uh, and and it has been really strong ever since. So this is really his first venture beyond uh, Tallahassee in, in trying to see what other options out there. So he's talked about taking these trips and he's talked about taking official visits as well. And I think that's the grouping that will be key because if you talk to Solomon five seconds in, he'll say, ask my mom, whatever my mom wants to do, we're going to do. So when you talk about official visit season, 
Now mom's flown in as well, wined and dined the same way to a higher level. So I do think that's going to be where we get a little bit more true movement or tangible movement with Solomon. But there's no doubt Florida's done a really nice job. Um, I've, I've had a couple inquiries into to Gainesville sources of mine with him and, and they're corresponding and saying, hey, we're hearing that Florida's trying to work mom as well. So they understand that that she's the priority. I think Solomon's made that clear for everybody recruiting him. Uh, South Carolina's like maybe a sneaky program yep. in the mix there too. And, and again, we, we know Miami and Mario Cristobal, especially for an old lineman, are, are going to go all out. So I, I do think there's a lot of battles ahead for Thomas, regardless of his commitment status. So even if he flips to Florida this weekend, which I'm not expecting, uh, or he holds off and, until signing day, this is going to be a, a huge battle because he's another one like Addison. Every time he is seen, his stock rises. And I think that that, that has added pressure from all these programs to, to be the winners and, and keeping them uh, keeping him in state at their school versus a rival. Yep. Well, I also want to get your take on where FSU stands with some of the better linebackers uh, in Florida and the country for that matter. Obviously, they're in on some national kids. Uh, had Riley Pettijohn in here two weeks ago. Uh, but listen, uh, two linebackers that were high priorities for them, T.J. Alford commits to Ohio State. Duke Johnson commits to Alabama. Uh, you know, Florida State was in on both of them, either – finish second or third, depending on who you talk to. Uh, they have the four-star linebacker, Ethan Pritchard, committed uh, from Sanford Seminole. Who do you think is the most likely guy that uh, are the, the most – whether they can be one, both be true or both be separate? Is it Pettijohn? Is it Tavion Wallace? Is it Gavin Nix, Ty Jackson? Uh, where do you see Florida State in the pecking order with some of these kids at linebacker? Yeah, you know, and all these guys are different, which I think is fascinating for for what you're looking for in today's game at the linebacker position. But the good news is Pritchard's on board. He appears really solid, and it's a wide board thereafter, and including those guys who just made those commitments elsewhere. I mean, we did the commitment interview with with Duke Johnson. And he's like, yeah, I'm still taking all my official visits. Yep. Um, Alford, we think, is still going to take all his official visits. He'll be at the camp Sunday and we'll get an update there. Um, so if if and when those two committed prospects take trips, Florida State will be on the docket, whether it's this summer or into the fall uh, for a, a, a game day official visit weekend, which are always you know a little bit more uh, unique and obviously closer to National Signing Day. But among the uncommitted guys, I, I point to Gavin Nix. I think the profile with him, another Orlando native, Early on was it's going to be really hard to pull him out of the state, you know, between a, another classic big three battle with, with the Gators and the Hurricanes. But even early on, there was always this sense that FSU might have the early edge and nothing has really pulled me off of that as Gavin has matured and become like the captain of the IMG uh, Academy defense. Um, talked to him at the pro day at the end of February, and it, it was pretty similar. The difference now is that some out-of-state programs are trying to find their way into the mix. Notre Dame, a yeah, couple others, uh, really, yeah, really trying to hang around in this recruitment before Knicks comes off the board. But I think, you know, according to everything we heard initially with him uh, and, and still to this, this point in the cycle, I think Florida State's in, in a really good position there. High floor backer, a little bit different than Alford and some of these others uh, that have come off the board. Uh, so I think that's the – the, the first place I would go in terms of looking at, you know, maybe the most likely seminal addition, but they'll continue to recruit all these guys. And I think they'll get officials from the bulk uh, of this list. Um, and then Ty Jackson, he's a wild card. Uh, yeah. He's, he's going to take a ton of trips uh, sort of just now getting to that point in his recruitment where he is a national recruit and he's just now hitting the road really for the first time. So I think we, we've got a longer way to go in that recruitment, um, you know, through official visit season this summer and into the fall, most likely. He's already hinted at a later decision rather than sooner. So I do think that, you know, that type of talent, you just got to continue to recruit all the way through. So kind of no matter how the dominoes shake out, it looks like Florida State's going to end up with a solid linebacker group depending on how many they want to take. Yeah, they're definitely going to get their shot on campus with several of these guys. Tavion Wallace in town for his official visit on June 14th. Ty Jackson, same weekend. Uh, I don't know if – it looks like 
Yeah, Z- Z- the Zydarius Rainey S- Sell, the kid from Washington State, is going to be here that same weekend. Gavin Nix, the 21st of uh, June. Uh, don't look like I don't think they've got an official visit locked in with Zayden Walker. Um, Mark Ian Anchor, I can't remember. I can't from Harbor City, California. I, I'm killing his name, but uh, you know he was in town on an unofficial visit. He says he wants to get back. Uh, Jaden Harmon came out with his top ten yesterday. I think yep. Florida State's in there. Yep. Uh, so you know they're, they're in on some of these kids, and uh, I think you're right. I think we're going to see a bunch of visits. Uh, I, I think we're going to see the number of commitments grow when we get to June and all these official visits start going, uh, start happening. Uh, listen, and listen, I, I've seen a couple, we got a kid, uh, CJ Wiley's on an official visit this weekend to Auburn. I don't, I don't, re- I mean, these official visits are starting earlier and earlier, so we may start seeing some activity, but, uh, when he, he caught me off guard at Tuesday at practice when, uh, CJ was on an official visit here. And, uh, he said, I've got an official visit at Auburn this weekend. I was like, what? I, had sh- I shook my head. I'm really not, uh, you know, used to seeing early April official visits. Yeah, and that's going to roll into May, and, and like you said, June will, will be the bulk of it. So really between now and, and the end of camp season, we're going to see a, a hundreds of, of verbal commitments. So that's really going to be, for me, the starting point of trying to figure out, hey, who's going to position themselves you know, for a top class, and, and we'll start tracking the, the team race a little bit closer. But a lot of, a lot of big needle movers will, will be making those decisions you know, June and, and certainly into July. I want to get your take on this. We had a question on our board the other day when I was posted something about recruiting and they were concerned that Florida state only had four commitments at right now. And of course, uh, you know, I went, I think Miami had four or five, Florida had four or five, Alabama had four or five. I think Auburn's probably at least in this local vicinity. I think they got seven or eight. They're kind of out ahead of from a numbers game. Uh, and this 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 subscriber was concerned about the lack of commitments, and I think what we're seeing, John, is uh, the longer we get in the NIL, these guys have gotten smarter, right? Uh, the more schools they visit, the more they leverage their value uh, because no one knows what the real market value is. If that kid tells you it's a hundred thousand dollars at this school, <laughs> you got to take him at his word, right? There's no, mm-hmm. there's no uh, so you know, my as I told what my philosophy, what I told this subscriber was listen, I think these kids are doing just that. They know that the more they visit other schools, the more they leverage their value, and this is these are more job interviews now than they ever have been in the past and we you know we, we see all these kids uh like you mentioned earlier i see more kids mentioning south carolina that i can remember in a long time and of course now there's unlimited official visits you go right. one to every school as many schools as you want as long and then you can go a second time if there's a coaching change uh but do you see the same thing happening and uh, listen I, I, I my answer other than that was listen Florida State's going to win a bunch of football games this year and Mike Norvell works really hard at recruiting those two things will take care of this next recruiting class but do you think we're starting to see kids get really smart they got an adult in their ear uh and now listen now you say to Florida you got high school NIL I mean this this stuff's going to get nuts uh, but what's your take on the fact that there's maybe Florida State does not have as many commitments as with this class for 2025 as it did this time last year for 2024? Well, you mentioned it's it's a trend. A lot of the national powers have very low numbers. Um, it, it's not a huge. I mean, Georgia's got six guys, you know, and, and it's just what we see. I think the the Notre Dame's and LSU's are the outliers. You know, they're, they're nearing 20 and 15 commitments respectively. Those are outliers relative to what, what we see going on elsewhere. And you understand it, right? Louisiana, look, they're locking in a lot of those kids uh, towards LSU. And, and that's that. And that's always been that, especially when the Tigers are rolling and Notre Dame has to recruit differently. It, it just is what it is. They have a national board because they don't recruit locally, high, higher academic standards. So they've had this trend of getting started very early in the process uh, with a, a lot of volume, and we're seeing that again. But basically everywhere else, it's a long waiting game. Um, because, I mean, how many kids have we talked to uh, talked about on this show already, Pat, who are committed and still taking visits? Yeah. So it, on one end, it doesn't even mean as much as it used to because of, of NIL, because of the portal, and just the natural fluidity that is college football. So right. you've got to get your top school, and then you've got to – develop some backup options, even if you don't want to. I mean, we're seeing the number one player in the country 
as a quarterback taking visits as a committed recruit, right? Julian Lewis. Yep. So this is something that that's not going to go away. Um, whether FSU is targeting prospects committed elsewhere or FSU commits or taking other trips, it just is what it is at this point. Um, but I do think once the season starts, that's when you can start to gauge one team versus the next, because right. while it's wide open in the wild West right now, and limited OVs, all that stuff, there is a little bit of urgency when the season gets near because now you're not able to take as many visits. Logistically, it's just harder. Everybody's busier with their own individual seasons as well. So there is this sense beyond the five-star guys, hey, I got to get my spot. I got to claim my spot right. in June or July or August. So I think once we kick off the season, that's sort of ground zero for, okay, now let's start to look at one class versus the other and you go from there and then of course the, the college season is going on simultaneously and that always bends and shifts that that curve of the programs that have momentum in the off season versus real momentum during the season uh, so i think that's what when we get a little bit better sense of one team versus the next it's just it's just too early right now beyond the quarterback position and obviously fsu is is pretty rock solid there with with tramel jones in the fold who's another one continues to up his stock he's looking like one of the more consistent quarterbacks in this class uh so i i do think that's a good starting point for the Knowles, and a lot of receivers continue to mention him when they do talk about fsu so that'll be a good point once that dust does start to settle later in the summer yeah and uh listen uh i i'm sure florida state fans hopes that he has some sway with jamie french and uh Drake Stubbs as well. Uh, I was a little bit surprised that Drake committed to USC when he was out there. It'll be interesting to see how that holds up because I thought it was Florida and Florida State all the way with him. Uh, he alluded when we had him on our show that he thought he that he was going to probably open it up a little bit more, that there were some other teams, and obviously USC did a good job. Uh, now, were you surprised to see what happened out there that, that weekend with Justice Terry, uh, Isaiah Gibson, who was here yesterday? Isaiah was here. Uh, he did not set a, a date for his visit, but he did say that he will be back in June for an official visit. So, again, another guy that's committed but has been to Florida and Florida State since his commitment to USC. So you're right there. There. Uh, John, uh, there's another uh, there's another thing that's going to impact recruiting classes that's going to open up in about 10 days, and that's the NCAA transfer portal. Oh, yeah. Uh, listen, uh, I've already heard that there's a highly there was a highly sought after offensive lineman who signed up signed with USC and enrolled early. I'm hearing some rumors that he may be interested in coming back east after one semester at USC. Um, depending on who you talk to, this is going to be the craziest spring portal we've ever seen. Uh, I, you know, that it's going to be, it's going to be so big that there's going to be, it's going to mandate that there be changed in how the portal is operated. I listen, I, and then I've listened, talked to other people who thinks it's going to be just same old thing as it was last year. Uh, it's going to be kids that aren't playing. They're going to jump in the portal and not find a landing spot. What is your read on what's going to happen with the portal starting in 10 days? Well, look, that ladder group that you talked about, that's that's always going to be the volume portion of the portal, right? Hey, I'm disgruntled. I'm not getting the reps. I'm out. I mean, that group is always going to be in there. But what I'm being told about this spring in particular is that there's going to be a lot of star power in the yep. portal. So it might not be the overall volume, certainly not what we saw in December when it was truly wild in every sense, but I'm told the star power is going to hold up uh, during that spring portal window. And it's also a pretty small window, right? So all of that action kind of has to go down pretty quickly. Um, and obviously recruits are going to be become more aware of that, which is why I do think we're seeing right, really right now, a little bit of a spike in, in verbal commitments, just a small one because that portal window is going to start to alter things. So, that's why a lot of these quarterbacks are really trying to wind down their process and, and come off the board at the high school level. But, yeah, when, when the portal starts shaking and rocking and a big quarterback makes a move, it is absolutely going to affect high school recruiting. And, and those other positions, to, to a lesser degree, will have that same type of, uh, of splash uh, to the point where programs on their end might want to hold off on taking some verbal commitments. I've been told – several blue chip recruits have tried to come off the board to programs that aren't just, you know, Georgia, Ohio state 
Michigan, et cetera. And, and they're saying, hey, hold off a little bit. Just give us a couple yeah. weeks and let's see what happens. And we all know that's translation for let's see if we can splash in the portal and allocate some of this money maybe in this direction versus yeah. that one. So it's going to create a ton of change uh, during the process and, and especially after. But I'm being told that big names can jump into that portal uh, as soon as that window opens. It might not just be as popular and, and, and volume, as much volume as, as we're used to seeing. Yeah, listen, it's it's going to be fascinating if, you know, what you like, you've been doing this a long time. Uh, the gentleman I was listening to on his podcast just happened to have it in the background. It's what kind of drew my attention to it. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens. These kids, I know some of these kids are going to jump in to leverage to get more money out of their NIL deals. And some kids are going to go because they want to play for a different team, different coach uh, for whatever, a myriad of reasons. But uh, I think it's going to be fascinating to see what happens. Uh, I know, obviously, we're doing some things in the background to get ready for it here at Rivals and at the Osceola. So I yeah. think it is going to be fascinating. Uh, listen, uh, there's a ton going on with 2026 kids at Florida State right now. Uh Rodney Dunham was offered uh, four star defensive end was offered yesterday. Uh, and uh, obviously he, I mean, offered today, he was at practice yesterday. And then uh, about a half an hour ago, one of the top quarterbacks in 2026, uh, Brady Smigel r- r- arrived in Tallahassee for a two day visit. They're going to have uh, Antoine Hill, a 2025 quarterback here, Dalen McCutcheon, uh, Peyton Joseph, of course is going to be back, but there's anybody, John, that, we have not talked about that you think Florida State is trending in the right direction with and possibly could be a guy that they earn a commitment from over the next couple weeks, months. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm always curious about the, the panhandle guys, the guys in that I-10 corridor uh, who FSU starts to turn up the heat for because typically the Knowles can kind of slow play that group, right? It, it's one that they've always sort of owned from a territorial standpoint. So I'm wondering in that grouping, you know, who's going to rise uh, for the Knowles. I actually just wrote about before this pod, uh, Amari Clemens, a 2026 running yep. back from, from Mariana, uh, who's got great, great tape. He's got a great frame on him as well. Really eager to see him in person. Uh, he just got the offer from Mike Norvell what, last week. So yep. he's one I think that that could maybe end the process sooner r- rather than later. But there's a bevy of guys in the northern part of the state that, that I really like towards Florida State. And I'm curious to see on the eastern end of, of that corridor, Jacksonville, not just with Solomon Thomas, but you mentioned French, Stubbs, holding on to Tramel Jones because he's being pursued by a lot of other uh, schools as well, including Florida, to, to bring that theme back around. You know, how does that shake out for Florida State? Because Jacksonville is is typically a little bit more Gator heavy, even Georgia heavy uh, fr- from a recruiting standpoint. So if FSU can make some inroads on that side of I-10, I think it could really uh, you know be positive uh, for years to come. And this class will be telling because this is as good of a Jacksonville group uh, in 25 as, as we've seen. Yeah, I think I'm going to spend some time in Jacksonville. In yeah, me too. I don't think there's any doubt about that. And listen, I, another guy they just offered who I think it's – well, uh, I think he's – I think this week started his explosion on the 2025 scene is Todd Robinson, the quarterback athlete at Valdosta High School, Florida State, LSU, Tennessee. Georgia. And I can't remember the fourth one in 48 hours. I mean, he, yep. he picked up some nice offers. You throw on his film – uh, listen, he's not being recruited as a quarterback by Florida State. Maybe somebody will give him a chance at quarterback, but you turn on that kid's film. But I don't know if you've watched it, John. That kid is yep. dynamic. Uh, I'm trying to think of who he reminds me of, but he is a guy that uh, can flip the field in a hurry and very uh, uh, elusive as a ball carrier. Uh, but, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to seeing if they get him on uh, campus for an official visit because that kid uh, is going to have offers from every major – power in the college football here soon yeah but, uh, i think he just got georgia as a running back too so, yes. yeah, he's he's blowing up like you said kind of in real time yeah so that's gonna it's gonna be fun to watch well listen never a dull moment in recruiting we know you got to get ready for a busy busy weekend and uh john as always we appreciate you having coming on with us and uh value your knowledge uh and experience in the industry and obviously you're welcome anytime. If you're not an Osceola subscriber, please go to theosceola.com and check us out. We've got a ton of uh, recruiting info in front of the paywall, 
back of the pay, behind the paywall. Uh, of course, we got our YouTube uh, channel. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, hit the notification button so that you get notified when we do these type of things, whether it's recorded or live. John, of course, will be back with us later in the summer. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you in Tallahassee at some point, John. But uh, again, John will be at the Miami Rivals camp this weekend, along with the Osceola's Nick Carlisle and Charles Fishbine. So we will have a ton of information coming from Miami this weekend. And then, of course, Florida State will be hosting uh, I, I get probably several dozen prospects. We'll find out who the headliners are. We've already started a thread on the message board, so you can go there and see uh, who we've confirmed coming for this weekend to check out Florida State's second scrimmage of the spring. Uh, also, want to thank Air Lingus and Anthony Travel for sponsoring us. If you're planning to go watch Florida State take on Georgia Tech in Dublin, Ireland, please go to Seminoles2Ireland.com. That is Seminoles, the number two, Ireland.com. They have travel packages and ticket packages there for you to check out. John, have a great weekend, and we want to thank everybody for joining us on the Osceola's Reeling Them In recruiting podcast and videocast. You guys have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week.